Okay, welcome everybody, and uh, thank you, Professor Pal, for agreeing to give this talk here. Um, he has given this uh, given a talk here last year at this center, and uh, there are many in the audience who have attended it. And I can tell you, we are all looking forward to this talk. I will confess that what I was not looking forward to was trying to give a very short introduction to Professor Palash Baranpal. <laughs> so what I suggest is you Google him. He's easy to find. You'll get a lot of details. So I'll keep this as brief as I can. Um, he's, as was said in the posters and the email, he's a senior professor at, of the theory group at the Saha Institute of National, uh, uh, sorry, Nuclear Physics in Calcutta. And after his bachelor's and master's from Calcutta University, he went on to get his PhD from the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh in the US. So I won't talk about his work, look it up. Uh, I mean, his uh, research work, his areas of interest. But apart from this large um, volume of research papers and physics textbooks at the advanced college level, he's also written uh, in Bengali and in English many popular and pedagogical books and articles in science. So for example, A History of Dates and Years, which was uh, translated, I think, originally in Bengali and translated into English, um, A History of Measurements, Essays on Relationship relation of science with other aspects of human life, superstition, religion, um, science and mathematics. And so there are, when I start to <laughs> try and make uh, this little cheat sheet, I find there are many also's in it, and there won't be any time to go over them. Um, to give you an idea, the last talk he gave here was on uh, three horizons for technological, uh, sorry, terminological vocabulary in Indian languages. So that will give you an idea of the breadth of his interests and work. And because this is a talk on calendars and there are many students here, I leave you with one question. The talk he gave last year was almost, almost exactly a year ago, except that our talks are always on Thursdays. So you have to tell me which date in June that talk must have been on. Okay. So Professor Pan, please. Thank you very much for inviting me, for asking me to give this talk, and for this very kind introduction. And also thank you for this, if you have left it for me. <laughs> Although I, I usually don't use it. But <laughs> OK. <clears throat> so. The topic, or the title, as you see, is the history and mystery of calendars. Almost everything has a history, so probably you are not surprised to see the word history along with calendars. But the mystery part will come. I want to keep it mysterious. It will come as I, as I go along. Now, <clears throat> everything that I am going to say is contained in this book in Bengali, Shaltari Ke Ritihash, which I wrote. I forgot when it first came out, but this is the third edition, which is now uh, the one you can get. And um, you know, this is the advertisement part before the actual program begins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> so this is the this is the, and this one came out in like 2015, quite recently. This is an English translation of it, not made by me, but by a very uh, good uh, physicist who made the translation. The translation is a translation of the second edition of the book. And the third edition, of course, as you can imagine, is much better than the second edition. <laughs> so if you know Bengali, then you should read the Bengali version. And if you don't know Bengali, Learn Bengali. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so before I go to the next slide, I want to set up some conventions about this talk. 
some of the notations that I am going to use and something that will help you. One of these things is this number here. So, at any point of time, you should know roughly how much of the talk is still not done. Or in case you fall asleep, see the number before you fall asleep. And when you wake up, see the number. So, you will know how much you have missed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> The second thing is that this, apart from these uh, pictures and, and, the, and the little words here, you will see that the background is black. As I go along, you will see the background will change actually. Sometime it will change. So, when it will change, it is like going to a different chapter of the book. Okay? So, it is like making a, starting a new, uh, new thing in the talk. So, now, you see the background has changed. So, it is the beginning of chapter 1. Welcome. So, <clears throat> what does a calendar do? A calendar counts days into months and months into years. You can also talk about other units like weeks and so on, but they are not very important. Why not? I, I, may, I might explain at the end of the talk. So, days, months and years, these are the main preoccupations of a calendar. And as soon as I have said that, I feel that I have already said a sentence which needs a lot of explanation. Why? Because in this sentence, there are three words, day, month and year which are not very easy to define. So, let us just see why. Let us take the, <coughs> take the word day. What do we mean by a day? There are two definitions of day actually, even in colloquial uh, language. One is the day which is, uh, let us say, a 24 hour cycle. And the other is just the lighted part of the 24 hour cycle. So, we will try not to use it in the second sense, always in the first sense. So, in the first sense, a day means the time taken by the earth to complete one rotation around its axis, very easy. The problem is, how do you know when one rotation is completed? You see, these are designer flaws. When the earth was created, if it had been fitted with a bell, such that after one rotation, there would be a ting sound you would have known very easily, but the designers did not do it. Okay? So, we do not know how one rotation is completed. I mean, not that we do not know, but it is a, it's a question that needs some thought. And I ask the question, I will ask many such questions, not all questions can be answered in one hour. So, I will answer some of them and we will just raise the others, so that you can go and read the book. See, I am still in the advertising mode, I am sorry. I will leave it soon. So, the next uh, unit that was in that <coughs> fateful sentence that I uttered a little while ago is the year. So, year you will say, okay, it is the same thing again, it is it's the time taken by the earth to complete one, one revolution around the sun. And I will ask the same question, how do you know exactly when one revolution is completed? And again, this question I am not answering right now. I will come back to it later. But then there is the other unit, which is in between the day and the month. And it is a very convenient unit. And uh, in practical life, the way you define a month is that the, the duration between your two paychecks. Okay? So, it is a very convenient thing that the nature has divided such a unit. Because with just the day and the year, getting paid would have been very difficult. Okay, so, but uh, the month, in nature's way, is the time from one full moon to the next, or one new moon to the next. I really don't like the word new moon because the new moon means actually no moon. Okay, so I will stick with full moon. Now, <clears throat> now notice one thing. When I define the day and the year, I, 
talked about one complete rotation or one complete revolution. But when I defined the month, I did not say that this is the time that the moon takes to revolve once around the earth. I did not say that. I said one full moon to another full moon. Why did I not say that? Okay, let us see this picture. This is the sun and uh, these uh, green things are the positions of the earth at different times. The earth still probably looks gray, uh, greenish from the space. If it, if it goes like this way for a, another 100 years or so, probably there will be no green left. But still now I prefer to depict the earth with the green color. And then this, uh, this, this little thing is the moon. So at this point A, when the earth is at A, the sun, the earth, the moon, they are in the same line. So the moon, I mean in this picture, it is the left side of the moon that gets the, the, gets the light from the sun and that is the side also we see from the earth. So this is a full moon day. Then time passes, so earth moves and the moon also goes around the earth and then there is a position B when again the moon comes in the same line as the earth and the sun, but this time in between the two. Now here uh, it is actually no moon because the lighted part of the moon is away from us, but you see here from here is not 180 degrees, it is more than 180 degrees and the same thing uh, continues. Namely, when it actually uh, finishes 360 degrees and let us say the earth is at C, then it is not a full moon because now the three are not on the same line and a little later at D, again it will be a full moon. So the full moon takes more than 360 degrees of the moon going around the earth. So the time the moon takes from going from A to C is called the sidereal month. Sidereal means something related to stars. So this thing you can, how, it, how will you know it has gone 360 degrees by comparing with very far stars which has not noticeably moved in that time period. So that is how you determine it and that time period is roughly 27.3217 days. But the time from A to D which is one full moon to one full moon that is called the synodic month and that is larger as I said, it is a little more than 29 and a half days, 29.5306 days. So, <clears throat> so these are the different uh, uh, definitions of the month that you can get and we will most of the time use this definition of the synodic month, probably all along. If I have to use the sidereal month, I will give you warning before that. So, herein lies the basic problem of a calendar. The problem is that these ratios of the three different units, they are not integers. One year is 365.2422 days. I mean, it is actually more, I can go more, but I do not need more accuracy than that. So, it is uh, 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 46 seconds and one month that is the synodic month as I just said is 29.5306 days which is a little more than 29 days and 12 hours. And if you divide these two, then you will see that one year is actually 12.3683 months, that is 12 months, 10 days, 21 hours, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is the main problem. The problem is that they are not integers. So, how will you keep track of these fractions? You cannot possibly design a calendar and say that, okay, I mean the, 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 the next month starts at uh, 4 13 pm tomorrow, okay. That is not allowed. So, you will have to do integers, but you will have to use integers on a system which is not inte integer inherently, which does not have integers inherently. So, how to manage the fractions? This is the main problem of calendars and the answer in one word is by intercalation. Intercalation means sometimes you will have to insert something. So, 
I will give examples later, but for now, if you if you feel too tense without knowing the meaning of the word, I will say it is like the 29th of February on leap years. Sometimes you will have to insert some extra things to keep the uh, keep account of these fractions, that is the whole idea. Now, <coughs> because of this uh, intercalation, different ways of intercalation has given rise to three different broadly speaking three different calendrical systems. One of the systems is the solar calendar. What the solar calendar does is that it keeps solar years. So, the months have nothing to do with the full moon or anything. The months are just some convenient subdivision of the year as I said, so that we can get paid. Uh, it does not at attempt to correlate the phases of the moon with the days of the month. For example, the fact that today is the 15th of June, if I ask you therefore, what will be the phase of the moon, there is no, unless you know from some other information, you will not be able to tell from that information. So, examples of this calendar, there is the Gregorian calendar, which is now the international calendar according to which today is the 15th of the June and I will talk about it later. There is the Bengali calendar, which is also a solar calendar. Tamil calendar, these are some of the examples, there are many more, many more calendars like this. The second system is called a lunar calendar, it keeps the synodic months and the year is equal to 12 such months. So, remember that the synodic month is roughly 29 and a half days, multiply it by 12 you will get 354. So, in a lunar calendar, the year is 354 days roughly, because it is not exactly 29 and a half, sometimes it can be two, two, uh, 354, sometimes it can be 355, but that is it. And then the year ends, new year starts. So, new year, a new month, but so that means that the year does not correlate a month with a particular season. Okay? I will give you example and really I know only one example. In modern world, there is only one calendar as far as I know, which is the lunar calendar and that is the Islamic calendar. I will come back to it. The third system is sort of something in between the two and here the months are the synodic months. So, that is similar to the lunar calendar. The difference with the lunar calendar is that the year in this calendar lunisolar calendars, the year at an average is the solar year, not each year is 365 point whatever number of days at an average. So, how do they do it? If the lunar month is 29 and a half days, how do they do it? The answer is some years have 12 months, some have 13. That is how they keep the average equal to roughly 365. So, there are examples, almost all calendars in the world are lunisolar calendars. Whatever I have shown you in the other are just some exceptions. Almost everything, calendars of northern and western India, I do not know if you probably go out here, you can get the Kalnirnoy calendar, that is lunisolar, northern India lunisolar. Uh, <coughs> Chinese calendar, Hebrew calendar, Babylonian calendar, Greek calendar, you name it, almost everything is lunisolar calendar. So, I will also come back to it. So, now my task is, is to give some examples of the three different kinds of calendars and this is the next chapter. So, this is the first example, the Roman calendar. The Roman calendar in its present form is a solar calendar. It was not always so and I will show you the transition. The calendar, the, the solar calendar was actually borrowed from Egypt. You know there is a strange way we read history that if we are asked name one important person whom Julius Caesar encountered during his uh, you know his time in Egypt and almost everybody will say Cleopatra, because he had a romantic affair with him, 
but the affair with Cleopatra is nothing with the affair with another person called Sosigenes and probably most of us have never heard the name of Sosigenes. This is the bad way of doing history, you will see what Sosigenes did in a while. Egyptians are sun worshippers, so of course you see why they had a solar calendar <coughs> and uh, the Romans actually borrowed it, Julius Caesar borrowed it and this is the calendar which has evolved to become the international calendar and this is also the calendar which in India we commonly call the English calendar. It is a very, very, very a few more very <laughs> bad name and I will explain why, but I have a request. If you like that my talk even a little bit at the end of the talk at least take a vow that for three months you will never say English calendar. Okay? I, will, I will tell you why. So, first let us talk about the Roman calendar. How was the calendar? Okay. The calendar uh, before, I mean, well, there was a there was a emperor in Rome. His name was Numa Pompilius. He was around 700 BC. Before Numa, the calendar was like this. It started with the month Martius. If you want to translate it into English, this will be March. Okay. So it had 31 days. Then Aprilis. 30, Maius 31, Unius 30 again. <clears throat> so, these four months were named after some gods and goddesses of Rome at that time. Then the next month 31 days is called Quintilis. Quinque in Latin means 5. So, this was the fifth month. The month after that is called Sextilis. So, you know this has something to do with sex and since there are very many young people in this audience, I have to explain what sex is. In Latin is, it means six, okay. I, I, I do not explain what it means in any other language. <laughs> so, this is the sixth month and then September, Saptam, just rem remember the word Saptam in Sanskrit, seventh, seventh month, Octo. Ashta, November, Navam, Dasham. So, there were 10 months, 31 and 30 days and the total was 304 days. Now, that is a shock, right? Why 304 days? Were the Romans so dumb that they did not know that 304 days does not make a year, not even nearly, but they knew. But the point is, what happens after December? It's winter. You do not do anything, what is the point of counting days? <laughs> so, so, they would stop the calendar at that time and then when spring comes at certain time they would decide ok, now the new year begins and they will start a new year. Actually this is very similar to my own calendar when I was a child. Around the 4th or 5th of December the final exams will be over and then it was whole day we were very busy because morning there will be cricket and then there will be lunch and then afternoon there will be cricket and then come back and then evening there will be badminton and then we will go to sleep and it was like this we would never care what day it is you know which day of the week and so on until one day my mother would say in the morning hey get up you have to go to school today ok so the calendar starts again this is a very civilized way of doing things <laughs> and, and that is what the Romans used to do. So, <clears throat> this changed at the time of Numa around 700 BC. What Numa did is that he said well it is better to have two months there. So, they put two months and they were called Januarius and Februarius, you can understand what they mean in English. But the days of the months were changed. Uh, Let us start again from March, ok. It is 31, 29, 31, you see all 31s or 29s, not 30 at all. Why? 
because around that time the 700 BC the Romans have developed a kind of superstitions that the even numbers are evil numbers they are bad numbers. So, no month can be 30 days it would be very bad. So, so the everything is 31, 29 and of course, you see February is 28. Why is that? Because if February is also odd, then the total 12 months becomes even. <laughs> then the whole year is worked out. Okay. So, the total year is 355 days and this is what it is. Now, you can see 355, it should remind you uh, that I told you that 29.5 days a uh, month multiplied by 12 is 354, right? They are close to that number. Okay, now what they, they, they knew that 355 days does not make a year, solar year. So, what they would do is that uh, every other year they would add roughly 20 or 23 days to the year at the end. Of course, those days will be holidays unless you have to go to war for some reason. Okay, so, uh, and that way they will keep track of the whole thing. So, that is <coughs> that was at the time of Numa. Now, in 46 BC, Julius Caesar has come back from Egypt and he has brought back with him not Cleopatra, Sosigenes. Sosigenes was a, was a very famous astronomer there. So, Julius Caesar has while in Egypt he has learnt the way the, the Egyptian calendar works and so he was very intrigued and impressed. So, he brought Sosigenes along and said do something to our calendar, our calendar is a mess. So, with the Sosigenes's help there was some new calendar which was suggested. Let me again start from March. So, first of all they said that uh, that even number thing forget about it maybe they already have gotten over that superstition by that time I do not know, but now it is 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31 and now you will have to make it 29 in order to make the total 365. Okay. But then actually uh, Sosigenes also knew that it is not 365 days exactly, it is a little more than that and the Egyptian thought that the that this extra amount is exactly one quarter of a day. So, they also put a rule that you know after 4 years you will have to add one day. So, if you add one day you will add it to the February and you see in that year it is completely symmetrical right 31 30 all along beautiful beautiful scheme. So, um, Julius Caesar sort of uh, put a notice uh, putting this calendar into effect. And also he thought that he has done so much about the calendar that the calendar should actually remember him. So, <coughs> this month which used to be called Quintilis, he changed the name, changed the name to Julius. Okay. So, that is Julius's reform, but there was a problem with Julius's reform. The problem is about this adding the extra day. And of course, I, I do not know Latin to understand the exact problem, but the problem the, the nature of the problem is the following. The way this extra day addition was proposed is that they said after 3 years add an extra day, by which they meant that wait for 3 years and then in the 4th year add an extra day, but the, it was interpreted by saying that every third year you have to add an extra day. Okay. Of course, Julius knew what was the right thing, but they have already butchered Julius. right? So, 44 BC Julius is already gone. <coughs> so, there was nobody to correct them. Uh, I do not know what happened to Sosigenes in all this turmoil, but probably he was also not there. But this was noticed uh, about 38 years later at the time of Augustus. Now, 38 years if they had used the this this rule intercalation rule correctly, there would have been 9 
extra days in the 38 years. But because they were doing it every third year, there is already 12 of them. So, three extra days have been added. So, this was brought into the notice of uh, Augustus and then he said, yeah, that has been a mistake. So, from now on, uh, I mean whatever they, they probably corrected the, the thing, the three days and said so from now on, it is every fourth year. So, wait three years, do nothing and then the fourth year add one day. Now, human ego manifests in many different ways. Just by saying this much, Augustus thought, well, Julius has a month in his name. <laughs> so, why should not I have? So, the name of Sextilis was changed to Augustus, but he did something much worse than that. He said, Julius's month has 31 days. <laughs> I cannot stand my month having 30 days. So, August will have 31 days also. And now, to correct the things, you have to give all sorts of arbitrary things. September is 30 and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, whatever you cannot, uh, you know, uh, you cannot balance, it goes to February. That is the last month of the year, remember. So, February got 28. So, it is a very, very, very bad system now developed, but <coughs> uh, Augustus's name stuck there. And after Augustus, the person who became the Roman emperor, his name is Tiberius. Now, Tiberius looked at the calendar and supposedly he said, what will happen to the calendar? when the 13th emperor will come to Rome, because everybody has his own month. So, what will the 13th emperor do? So, Tiberius made a rule that nobody will be able to change the names of the months. <coughs> now, personally, I, 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 I mean it is a nice story, but I really do not appreciate what Tiberius did. If I was in Tiberius's place, I would have first named a month after me <laughs> and then made this rule. Okay. But uh, well, you can see Tiberius was a better person than, than Paul Arshpal, so he, he did not do that. So, there is no month in Tiberius's name and the calendar has remained like this. So, <clears throat> the next big step in this calendar were some reforms. And the biggest of those reforms is the Gregorian reform. <coughs> Before I can get to that, let me tell you why the reform was necessary. So, you see the average year in a Julian calendar is 365 plus 1 quarter of a day, which is 365.25, but the real astronomical year is 365.2422. So, there is a difference 0 0.0078 days which means 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Now, is that serious? 11 minutes? Who cares about 11 minutes? Well, you have to care because these 11 minutes actually accumulate over the years. So, in 1000 years, the discrepancy that will accumulate is this times 1000, which is 7.8 days. That is about 8 days. That is something you have to agree. So, <coughs> in 325 AD, uh, there was a convention of the Christian uh, church people in somewhere in Western Asia, Nicaea, and they noticed that something is wrong. It is not exactly agreeing. Already there is some accumulation by that time in 300 years, right. So, so th they did not know what is wrong. So, they just said, we do not know, but the vernal equinox, that is the time when in the spring time, the, the lighted part and the dark part of the day becomes equal, that was set on 21st of March. They said whatever happened, happened, but from now on we should, we should uh, treat our calendar in a way that the vernal equinox falls on 21st of March. Then in, but of course, they did not take any corrective measure. So, this 
problem started accumulating again. And in 1471, some scientists in Rome appealed to the Pope. There was no emperor by this time in Rome. The Roman emperor has fallen, leaving with us the task of writing the causes of the fall in our history uh, exams. Okay. So, now the head of Rome is the Pope. So, <clears throat> the scientist appealed to the Pope, whose name was Sixtus the Fourth, asking for a calendar reform. And in Vatican, this room where they actually did their measurements, made their measurements, that is still kept like that and it is called the calendar room. Anybody who would visit, visit Vatican would please see this room and anybody who has visited probably have seen this room. Uh, <clears throat> now, actually the uh, 1471, the appeal was made and the action was taken very quickly as you can see. Within 111 years, they decided that yes, uh, yes, something needs to be done. B by that time, the Pope was Gregory the 13th, so he approved the reform and that is why this reform is called the Gregorian reform. Now, there is a lesson of this thing that if you want to do something, please do not wait for 111 years, okay? because then you do not get the name. I mean, this reform should have been named by Sixtus, okay? but Sixtus waited for 111 years. There are other things might have happened in 111 years, which are obvious, I need not tell you, but please do not don't wait very long. <coughs> so, 1257 years have passed since the Nikea convention. So, the discrepancy accumulated is this 0 0.0078 per year times the 1257, which is 9.8 days. That is about 10 days. So, in 1582, 4th of October was followed by 15th of October. 10 days were taken off the calendar. Okay. In fact, there is a beautiful site on the internet now, which is called dateandtime.com or .org or maybe timeanddate.org something time and date com org this is some combination of these things there you can just give the name of any country and any year and it will show you the calendar for that that year for that country so give italy and give 1582 you will see 1 2 3 4 15 16 17 18 so on okay <coughs> so that that is what was done but then you have to make a new rule, so that the problem does not happen again in future. <coughs> so, the rule was this, that the years which are divisible by 100, for those years, according to Julius, they would have been leap years, one extra day, but now according to Gregorian calendar, they will also have to be divisible by 400 in order to be a leap year. So, for example, 1700, 1800, 1900 should not be leap years, 2000 will be, 1600 will be. So, you see this is a very shrewd thing done, they were doing it in 1582, right. The next such year, where there is a conflict with the Julian calendar is 1700, 1600 it is the same. So, the first time there will be a difference will be 100 and something years later let those people take care of it, we will not be there at that time. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, 2000 should be a, uh, well 2000 was uh, a leap year. So, now the average length of the year after this reform is 365 plus in any cycle of 400 years, according to Julius there were 100 leap years, now there are 3 less as you see from here, so there will be 97. So, if you do this, this is 365.2425. That is still not correct, because you remember that the original thing is uh, 0.2422. So, there is still a discrepancy, which is 0 0.0003 days per year, but with that discrepancy, uh, one discrepancy of one day will be accumulated in more than 3300 years. Now, of course, you can still ask, what will you do after 3300 years? Well, the answer is very simple. You use the 
Earth in a way that it doesn't last for 3,000 3, years. Okay? And that is what we are doing now. <clears throat> so, beautiful solution. <laughs> okay. Now, what happened to this suggestion of Gregory? 1582, as soon as the suggestion was made, it was obviously taken by the Catholic countries because they were directly under the Pope. Italy, France, Spain, Portugal. 1950, uh, sorry, 1583, Switzerland, Netherlands. 1584, Germany was still not one country. Of course, many, many of the others were still not one country. But Germany had two different parts. There was a Catholic part and there was a Protestant part. If you remember your history enough, uh, Martin Luther has already arrived. So, Protestantism is, is there in the air. So, the Catholic part of the Germany actually agreed to the Pope's uh, suggestion. But the Protestants said, no, 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 no. We are not under Pope. So, we won't have to take, their, take his suggestion. Until more than 100 years later, in 1700, they said, well, even if that was Pope, it's something we should, I mean, this is not really religion. This is something science. So, we should agree. So, the Protestant Germany also agreed to the Gregorian reform. And now, oh my God, now, so I have been talking for more than half hour. Have I ever talked about any contribution from England? No. In 1752, England woke up and said, oh, there was 170 years ago, there was some reform proposed. We did not do anything. Maybe we should do something. So, by this time, the discrepancy was 11 days. So, September 2nd was followed by September 14th. So, you see, there is a calendar which we call English calendar. That was not proposed by the English. That the reforms were not taken by the English. When the reforms were thrown on their faces, they did not wake up until 170 years. So, if that is called an English calendar, then I am sorry. Tomorrow, if you say that Rasagulla is a, is a sweet made in Mumbai, I will have to protest. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, the calendar has nothing to do with England. But of course, because of the change, they adopted some, there were some changes. For example, Newton's birthday, you will see in some books, it will 25th of December, the Christmas day of 1642. And in some books, it is the 5th of January of 1643. When I was a little child, I read these both dates and then I thought that such a great person <laughs> <laughs> had even two birthdays. <laughs> so, but it, anyway, so of course, I cannot give the history of all countries and not, not everything is interesting. In Russia, in 1917, the Bolshevik revolution took place. The czars were dethroned. The czars were sort of aristocratic idiots. They, they did not have any knowledge about anything. Okay? But the people who came, Lenin, for example, no matter what you say after the fall of communism in, in Russia and in Eastern Europe, Lenin was an extremely educated person. This you cannot take away from him. And Lenin knew that the calendar is in, there is a problem. So, immediately after the revolution, the revolution happened in October or November, he said that the calendar has to, there has to be reform. And so, Russia adopted the Gregorian reform. But by this time, the discrepancy was 13 days. So, the 31st of January was followed by the 14th of February. So, again, the same kind of problem. For example, the beginning of the Russian Revolution. Somewhere it says it is the 25th of October, which is why they call it the October Revolution. And in some text, they will say it is the 7th of November, which is why they call it the November Revolution. They are talking about the same thing and the same day even. Okay, but one in the wrong calendar and one in the right calendar. This is the point. So, this is the history of the international calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the Roman calendar, whatever you want to call it. And I will, I will stop this history here and go to some other calendar. 
I will go to Islamic calendar. <coughs> so, Islamic calendar as I told you before, it is a only major lunar calendar that exists in the world. So, the average length of the year is one uh, sidereal month which is a little more than 29 and a half times 12 which is 354.3672 days. So, the individual years are either 354 or 355. So, you see there is a difference with the solar year which is about 11 days. So, the, the dates in this calendar sort of move with respect to a solar calendar or with respect to the seasonal cycle by about this 11 days. To, to, to explain what I mean, let me give you the uh, dates of the Eid al-Fitr. The Eid al-Fitr happen after the end of the month, which in Arabic is called Ramadan and in Persian it is called Ramzan and in Indian languages we learnt most of the things from Persian directly, not from Arabic directly. So, we call it Ramzan or in Bengali we call it Ramjan. So, <coughs> So, these are the dates, look from the bottom. In 1998, it was 30th of January, 99, 20th of January. So, you see roughly 11 days, 10 days actually, but it can be 354 or 355, so it can be 10 or 11. So, 20th of January, uh, next year 2000, it is 9th of January, but then something happened. The next one was not in 2001 because if you count 354 days starting from 9th of January, you do not go into 2001, it is 28th of December 2000. So, in 2000 there are two Eid al -Fitr's. and then again 2001 it is moved 11 days, again 11 days, 11 or 10, 11 or 10 all, all the way. I have here until 2011, now homework without looking at the calendar you just calculate when is the Eid al-Fitr in 2017 and then go back to your home and check. And if you do not have a calendar at home, just wait a few more days because it is coming in a few more, in a few days. So, this is the Islamic calendar <coughs> and now I will talk about some lunisolar calendar. So, <clears throat> let us start with a chart uh, just like the one I showed before. This time I am showing you the Gregorian calendar dates for what is called Dashera in most of India and it is called Vijaya Dashami in Bengal. So, <clears throat> 1997 it was 11th October, 98 1st October, see moved 10 days. But now, it will not be like the lunar calendar. What happens is that there is a one month intercalated between this 1998 Dasera and the next Dasera. So, if it were not intercalated, the date would have gone back by 11 days. But now, you have intercalated one month which is 29 days. So, actually it will go <coughs> forward by 29 minus 11 <coughs> that is 18 days. So, from 1st of October it will be 19th of October. <coughs> Next year it has again gone back by 11 days and then again one month intercalated. So, it again went forward by 18 days and so on. It goes on and at some points one extra month is introduced so that the average length of the year remains the solar year and that, that's how these dates change okay so the question is when do you introduce these extra months and how often do you introduce these extra months <coughs> roughly once in 3 years because the discrepancy as i said is like 10 or 11 days and one month let's say roughly is 30 days so roughly once in 3 years, but that is only roughly. Let us be a little more pre precise. At the beginning of the talk, I told you that one year is 
12.3683 months. So, if I introduce one, one month every three years, that means I am introducing at an average one third month every year, which is 0 0.3333. That is not very close to 3683, that is quite far. So, you have to look for some fraction which is close to this and there is a fraction which is 7 over 19, which is very close 3684. So, if you intercalate 7 months every 19 years, then roughly everything goes smoothly. So, how and when these months are added? in the, let us say you have a 19 year cycle, when do you add the month. Now, this varies from one lunisolar calendar to another. Here I give an example of the Hebrew calendar. In the Hebrew calendar what they do is that let us say I have a 19 year cycle which is from 1 to 19 I have written here and at the end of the first year I have 0 0.3683 months accumulated. So, do not do anything. End of the second year twice as much, still do not do anything. End of the third year, if I had let it accumulate, it would have been 1.1. So, now I put in one month. So, whenever this accumulation comes becomes more than 1 or comes very close to 1, then they would put one extra month. So, that is how in the 19 year cycle every 3rd, 6th, 8th, 11th, 14th, 17th, 19th, they will interpolate or in intercalate one extra month and that is how the Hebrew calendar works. And now it is a new chapter and I am sure you knew that this is a chapter which would come, not only because the speaker is Bengali, but the Bengali calendar has some very unique features which has to be talked about. And by the way for other Bengalis present here the features are not nice. So, the Bengali calendar is a solar calendar as I have told you before. It follows the calculations of a 16th century text called Surya Siddhanta. According to this text, one year was 365.258756 days. Now, this is more than 365 days, 6 hours, 12 minutes and so on, whereas the actual thing is remember 2422. So, there is a discrepancy and the discrepancy is 0 0.0166 days per year. Because of this, the Bengali calendar is actually shifting, because there was no Gregorian reform or anybody's reform. Okay. So, the Bengali New Year day, for example, now appears every year almost 14th or 15th of April. Now, think about it, what is so special about 14th or 15th of April? Try to, try to explain somebody 14th or 15th of April without using the Gregorian calendar. You will see it is it's very difficult, 14th or 15th nothing happens by which you can describe it, nothing happens in nature. So, what is the thing? The, the, the new year was all, um, originally set on the vernal equinox day, which was 21st of March. And because of this accumulation per year in 1400 years or so, the accumulated amount is 23 days. So, from 21st of March you count 23 days that is your 15th of April. Okay. Something as recent as Rabindranath's birthday. Rabindranath was born, oh, Rabindranath's birthday in calendars it comes on 8th or 9th of May. But Rabindranath was born on the 6th of May. This Rabindranath himself has, has written. I will of course say that Rabindranath does not have a very good memory of that time, but certainly other people in his family did and he must have heard it from the, his mother or uh, somebody else in the family. 
So, this was the birth date, but since then uh, this is 151 now it is actually more 156 or something, but anyway this is a just rough thing. So, more than 150 years have passed and so the accumulation is two and a half days and that explains the shifting from the 6th of May to the 8th of May. So, if the calendar goes on like this no Gregory comes Rabindranath's birthday will keep on shifting the new year will keep on shifting. You will not notice every year because to shift one day it takes roughly 70 or 80 years as you see two days shifting has taken roughly 150 years. So, that is like a lifetime of a person. Okay. So, a person will not probably realize in his or her lifetime that it is shifting, but if you continue it for a few hundred years then you will see the shift. So, why is this discrepancy of 0 0.0166 days per year? Well, the, the calculations were not very refined in 6th century AD that was a long time ago certainly, uh, but that is not the main problem. The main problem was that in this calculation the Surya Siddhanta people did not take the precision of the equinoxes into account. So, now that I have said that I have to explain what is precision of equinoxes, but this is a, <coughs> a science audience. So, I can go fast what are the equinoxes? Well, you see this is the orbit of the earth around the sun, this is the sun figuratively at the middle and this is the, 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 the yellow line. Can everybody see the yellow line even from the back? Okay. So, this yellow line is the axis of the earth. Now, the orbit of the earth is tilted with respect to the axis. I mean the axis is not perpendicular to the orbit that is what I mean. So, uh, oops. Okay. So, at this point the, the northern hemisphere is closer to the sun than the southern hemisphere. So, it is summer in northern hemisphere, winter in southern hemisphere. Opposite point just the opposite, summer in southern hemisphere, winter in northern hemisphere, but in the middle there are two points where this line will be exactly perpendicular to the line joining the earth and the sun. So, those are the two points we will call the equinox points. So, the north pole and the south pole will be equidistant from the sun. So, one of them is called the vernal equinox, the vernal when it comes in the spring and the other is called the winter uh, uh, sorry the autumnal equinox that is something which comes in the autumn. So, the, uh, the summer solstice in, in north um, hemisphere summer solstice happens on 21st of June, autumnal equinox on 21st of uh, uh, September, winter solstice on 21st of December and vernal equinox on 21st of March. I think something is wrong, not all of them are 21, may be autumnal equinox is 23rd, may be this is a typographical error, but anyway roughly around that point. So, so now you see that there are, now that we know about this, uh, we talked about this axis of the earth. Now, we will have to say that the earth has three major types of motion, we have talked about two before one is the daily motion, the diurnal motion around its axis, then there is the annual motion around the sun, but then there is a third motion which is called the precision and that precision means that this axis which I showed you in the last slide that axis is also not uh, does not point to a fixed direction in space, it actually wobbles. So, it is like a like a toy top it, it wobbles the axis. This wobble takes a long time, one complete wobble takes more than 25,000 years. Okay. So, it is less noticeable than the others, but the thing is there. And this is the thing that the Surya Siddhanta did not take into account. Now, what will happen because of the wobble? You see I, I told you in the last slide that the height of autumn and the height of spring comes when the north pole and the south pole becomes equidistant from the sun. Right. Now, if the axis were pointing at the same direction that means that starting from one spring 
equinox, one vernal equinox, you go around 360 degrees and then it is again uh, equidistant from the sun. Okay? But the axis is not pointing in the same direction. So, as you are going the axis is also doing, I am exaggerating the motion, but the axis is also doing like this. So, it will not take one full 360 degree before that the axis has already tilted. So, it will become equidistant a little before that. So, so if you consider this thing, then only the length of the year is 365.2422, which is what we had been using before. And this is the thing which determines the seasons on the earth, because this is the thing which determines when it will be spring, when it will be autumn and so on. Going around 360 degrees has nothing to do with our daily lives. We do not care whether it has gone 360 degrees. If you ask me which one is more important, 360 degrees or this equidistant from sun, north pole and south pole. So, of course, equidistance from the sun, north pole and south pole, because that is what determines the spring, what determines the autumn. It determines when you get good cauliflower in the market. It determines on when you will get good elish in, 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 the, in, the, in the fish markets and so on. Okay? So, so, this is the important part, whether it goes 360 degrees uh, in, in, the, in, in some space, who cares. Okay? So, this is the important, uh, important thing, but if you ignore this effect, then the length of the year becomes 365.2564, considerably bigger. Okay? That is going complete 360 degrees. Okay? So, Surya Siddhanto said 2586. So, they made a little error, that much of that small error is understandable considering that it was happening 1400 years ago, but they were actually trying to measure the wrong thing. <coughs> and the Bengali calendar makers have been using this, this measure, the wrong measure of the year all along, but it was realized in I think end of 19th century or maybe beginning of 20th century, it was realized that the Surya Siddhanto calculation was not correct. So, now there are two different Bengali calendars and no, do not don't, don't guess the rest of the story. The, the two is not one the old one and the one the corrected one. The two is the one is the still the old one which is the wrong measure of the wrong thing and the other is this second one, which is the right measure of the wrong thing, <laughs> but nobody still uses the right thing. So, this is how the Bengali calendar is functioning now. However, after saying all these things, <coughs> I should say there is one thing which is very beautiful in the Bengali calendar and that is the length of the months. The length of the months are not arbitrary it follows sort of Kepler's law. So, when the sun is closest to the earth, uh, the, the earth is moving fast, so the months are smaller. So, it, each 30 degree on the sky. Okay? So, around January there is Posh in Bengali calendar, the month will be smallest and six months later Ashar, the month Joshtha or Ashar, the month will be longest those long months can be 32 days. I have even seen 33 days, but that is not very common, but 32 days almost every year you will see. <coughs> okay. So, I am almost done, but the most of the Hindu, uh, well not most, uh, well the Hindu festivals are determined not according to the Bengali calendar, even in Bengal they are determined according to the lunisolar calendar of western India or northern India. That is why every year before the year starts there is a lot of tension. When will be Durga Puja this year? Okay. We will have to book the tickets for our holidays and so on. So, <coughs> so now how are months introduced or intercalated in Indian lunisolar calendars? 
this is the last thing I am going to talk about today. So, uh, we have seen a lunar month uh, synodic is 29.5306 days. Now, suppose I define something called a solar month, which is uh, with respect to the earth, the sun is moving in the sky uh, in the uh, throughout the year with respect to the background of stars and uh, in, throughout the year it is 360 degree. So, divide by 12, so that is 30 degrees. So, a 30 degree movement of the sun will be called a solar month. So, average solar month would be just one solar year divided by 12 which is 30.4368. This is roughly one day longer than the lunar month, average lunar month. So, suppose <coughs> of course, this is just average some are longer, some are shorter as I have already mentioned, but suppose you are keeping track of the lunar month and the solar month both, then typically what will happen? Within a solar month, somewhere in the middle of the solar month, a lunar month will start and that lunar month will end in the next solar month, but a little earlier. So, suppose this, this solar month on the 14th, a lunar month has start, started. So, we will expect it to end not on the 14th of the next solar month, but may be 13th, may be 12th of the next solar month. This is how it will happen, right. However, once in a while, what will happen that a solar month starts and on the same day, the lunar month starts. Then what will happen? The lunar month will end before the solar month ends. So, in other words, you will get two full moons within the same solar month and that month, if you have such a month, then that month is called the mala mass. Mal means garbage or dirt. Okay. So, it is a dirty month, not anything good can happen according to Hindu customs on that month you cannot, I would not say you cannot be born, I guess that is allowed, <laughs> but, but uh, you cannot marry, assuming marriage is a good thing uh, and uh, anyway, <laughs> many other good things are not allowed on that month, I am not sure what. So, if there is a Molomas, then that Molomas is the intercalated month in the Indian lunisolar calendars. That means, that suppose you have the Boishak. Okay. And the next solar month, uh, uh, sorry, the next lun lunar month, you are seeing that is a Malamas. Then you do not call the next month Jaishtha, you call it Adhik Baishak. Okay. And you will not see it in every year, because every year there will not be a new month, okay, an extra month. But roughly once in 3 years or 7 times in 19 years, this will happen. Okay. So, if you look at some of the lunisolar calendars like the Kalnirnai uh, or if you can buy one of these uh, diaries, which give you so many uh, dates in so many calendars that there is no other space to write anything. Uh, so, that kind of diaries are very helpful for me. Okay. So, that also will tell you when it is uh, Adhik mass. So, that is it, um, that is the intercalated month in the lunisolar calendars and that is that is how uh, the north and uh, west Indian calendars function. And that is uh, also the end of the talk actually, although I, I told you to keep track of this thing, but I also told you that the, the, the different backgrounds are different chapters. So, the last two slides are not any chapter, those are appendix. Okay. So, the talk actually ends here unless you ask me to go through the appendix. Thank you very much. So, if there are no questions, I will go through the appendix. Yes, there is a question. Is it possible that a uh, you know, calendar follows uh, the solar calendar for the, the number of days in a year, but for the number of days in a month, it follows the lunar calendar? 
in the sense the uh, le- length of my month is uh, dependent on the moon cycle that is the lunar solar calendar okay that is one of the three types of calendars that i talked about the average le- length of the year is solar year but the months are lunar months Uh, the Bengali year uh, was incredibly accurate, up to some five decimal places. Uh, now, incredible uh, so accurate in, in. I mean, the decimal places were uh, the five decimal. Oh, you mean the the Surya Siddhanta? Yeah, um, go back and uh, you get the Bengali solar year. This? No, no, no. Uh, much this? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, I mean, of course, I understand this is because of the calculation, sixth century base uh, AD. Um, were the observations of whatever observations? were consistent for such an accuracy or would, did they have any idea of error estimates in this? Um, I cannot give you a good answer but I, I also have the same doubt and I remember that when I wrote the book I went to Surya Siddhanta to some extent and I was not very satisfied but I do not remember exactly the details. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, the months January and February were introduced as 11th and 12th month, but uh, the god Janus is actually god of past and future and that is usually a reason given why uh, January is, to, uh, his name is given in the first month. So when this transition actually happened? The, uh, it's, it's a very good question and the, and the answer, I have actually uh, tried to uh, find a satisfactory answer for a long time and I was never satisfied. When it was done, I mean from some um, documents it seemed that it was done at the time of Numa Pompilius himself. But then it was inconsistent with the fact that all these uh, errors in calculations were dumped on to February, okay, which seems that the February was still the last month. Okay. So I, I really do not know because most of the original documents are in Latin. Okay. I mean I could read up to French and Italian I could read, but Latin I cannot read and I even read the French and some French and Italian text, but I was not satisfied uh, in the answer. But somewhere between Luna, uh, Numa Pompilius and Julius Caesar, this was done. This much is, can be said. So, sir, in the very first uh, Roman calendar, the uh, the days in each month were still not uniform alternating, uniformly alternating. So, September and October still had only 30 days. After that, it was alternating. So, is there any particular reason for that? Uh, if there is, I do not know. Because uh, you said uh, in the Augustus one, it was because Augustus wanted his name to have 31 days before that, but st- it still had thir- 30 and 31 uh, days. I understand your point. I just do not know the answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you didn't say anything about the week, seven days. Why That's in the I appendix. Mean, you didn't ask uh, for the uh, appendix. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> I gave you the obvious question to ask, and you didn't ask it. Yeah, so, so, so. Please go to the appendix. <laughs> okay, so now. Now that you have asked the question, (laughs) let me talk about some of the non-astronomical elements of calendars. All the things I have talked about before is about year, month and day, all of which have some astronomical basis. One non-astronomical element is the era. For example, now it is 2017, that has nothing to do with astronomy. That has to do with somebody who was born roughly 2017 years ago, roughly. Actually, Jesus Christ was not born 2017 years ago, but that's another, that's a miscalculation. But anyway, that, that remains. But so, some, some important aspect in human life, not in astronomy. The other thing is this week. This is a seven day cycle as we follow now, but the cycle was not always seven days. It was actually a market uh, day cycle. Because you see, uh, even if 100 years ago, refrigerators were not invented. Okay. So, people had to store the food they buy at their home. 
and uh, the stores were also not necessarily nearby. So, you cannot hold a market every month, because then the food will become stale. And also, you cannot hold it every day, because it was people cannot travel in train to, to have uh, you know the, 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 the food items at your door. Okay. So, there has to be some moderate cycle and the cycle was uh, sometimes 5, some in some countries 6, some countries 7 and so on. In Christian countries, a 7 day cycle was decided upon by the church, because of this uh, Genesis myth, the God created the, uh, the earth or whatever in 7 days. And the 7 days were named after what are called the 7 planets, the planets not in the modern sense of the term. But the planets are the things that you, if you look at the sky, there are seven things which move uh, in the background of the stars. The stars also move, but they all move at the same time. Okay. So, they all move like this and in that backdrop, there are seven things which move differently. And those are the things which are the sun. So, in Latin, one day was called dies solis, lunae which is the moon. Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, um, Venus and Saturn. Okay. So, these were the, the seven things and the seven days were conveniently marked. In English, uh, the, the names are not like this. As you know, I mean this is uh, this, this has nothing to do with, this is Sunday, this is moon day or Monday, but this has nothing to do with Mars or Mercury etcetera. But this is not just in Latin. For example, even now, uh, let us say in French, the names are roughly these things. Okay. So, except uh, the Sunday, which is Dimanche, which is the, the, the day of the Lord. So, this is Ladi, this is Madi, this is Makrodi, this is Jadi, this is Vodrodi, and this is Sandi. Okay. So, you can see the, the connection. But <coughs> then again, the question comes that why is the, the, the ordering like this? And the ordering actually has an interesting uh, uh, explanation. I do not know whether this is the correct explanation, but this is the only explanation that I could find. The ordering is this, that you consider the uh, for these seven objects, the sidereal period, which is the their cycle in the sky in the backdrop of stars. For the moon, I already said at the beginning of the talk, that it is 27.3 days. This is the sidereal month. For Mercury, it is 88 days, for Venus, 20, 225 and so on. The longest is the Saturn, which is 29.5 years. And now, there are 24 hours in a day. Apparently, the hours of the day were also named after the planets. So, not only the days of the week, but hours of the day. So, how did it go? Okay. So, if it is a Saturday, the first hour belongs to Saturn, the next hour belongs to Jupiter, the third hour to Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon, <coughs> then the eighth hour again belongs to Saturn and it goes on like this, 21st belongs to the Moon, 22nd Saturn, 23rd Jupiter, 24th Mars, then the next hour new day begins, that is the Sun. So, the next day is Sunday. And you again go on like this with the hours, after 24 hours are passed, the, you will see that you will land on the moon. So, the next day will be the Monday and then complete your cycle like this. So, everything falls in place. So, this is the, this is the explanation. Now, you have seen the appendix also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.